Good afternoon. In the name of St. John the Evangelist, welcome to all parishioners and visitors who join us to celebrate the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In addition, we extend a sincere welcome to all who join us digitally. We thank you for all your for all con for continuing to adhere to the guidelines of St. John's and the Archdiocese. In accordance with the new guidelines put out by the Archdiocese, we will now be return to distributing communion to the congregation at its regular time during Mass. Our Mass today is being offered for Gilbert Zachman. Please silence all cell phones. I will now lead the Archdiocesan prayer for vocations. Please join in with its intention in your heart. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless this archdiocese with many priests, brothers, and sisters who will love you with their whole strength and gladly spend their entire lives to serve your church and to make you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, Choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. Amen. Please stand. stand before the night as the shadows stretch and deepen come and make our darkness bright all creation still is groaning for the dawning of your might when the sun of peace and justice fills the earth with radiant light Still the nations curse the darkness, still the rich oppress the poor, still the earth is bruised and broken by the ones who still want more. Come and wake us from our sleeping so our hearts cannot ignore all your people. children at your door. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in the gospel this weekend, Peter, in a very generous moment, says to our Lord, should we forgive seven times? Seven times being the perfect number. And as Jesus responds, he says, no, Peter, not seven times, but 70 times seven. In other words, we are called to forgive all the time, everybody, everything. Not to be doormats, to hold ourselves accountable, to hold others accountable, but to forgive from our hearts in imitation of the Father's great characteristic. Huh? And as we become experts in forgiveness, our lives become more enjoyable. We don't hang on to that resentment, those grudges. We learn to let them go quickly and easily, and we experience peace, love, and joy. And so as we enter into these beautiful mysteries of God's love for us, let us take a moment, as we always do first, by acknowledging our sins and asking the Lord for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are very humble, my friend. <laughs> Do we need to? Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all of our heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. 
Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner holds them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers his sin in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember the last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, uh, remember the Most High's covenant and look and overlooks faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us live for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, 
Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the counting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. I love this Gospel passage. Becoming an expert in forgiveness really does make life much more enjoyable. When we can learn how to allow resentments and grudges to roll off our back quickly and easily, it really changes our perception, our perspective. When we can imitate God in this characteristic of His, it makes our life joyful. However, there's another another thing I want to talk about today. Tomorrow morning at 10.30, we will have the RCIA um, candidates and catechumens, those who are unbaptized, those who have been baptized Christian but want to come into the Catholic Church, receive the sacraments and become fully initiated in our Catholic faith. And I've done this many times. I've been a priest 14 years. I've done it, this will be my 14th time. Usually, in the RCIA program, 
the rite of Christian initiation for adults, begins in late September, early October, goes maybe once a week, once every two weeks for an hour or two hours, all the way into April, sometimes May, through the Easter Vigil, that Saturday night before Easter Sunday. And Easter Vigil is when normally all of the RCIA people come into our Catholic faith, our Catholic Church. Of course, because of the coronavirus, we are having some of the difficulties. We've actually delayed until tomorrow. We will have four catechumens be anointed at this fountain, this baptismal font, tomorrow. Four. And we'll also have I think, two, two or three families be confirmed and all of them receive Holy Communion for the first time. What I love to do in that very first meeting in late September, early October, the first maybe 10, 15 minutes of that very first meeting, as the pastor, I like to go in there. I've done this a few times, quite a few times. I like to tell them this. And tell me if you like my um, approach. I will say to each one of them, together as a group, and it's really interesting because as a group, really they become family. Over the course of the year, as we work through all of our issues and difficulties around our Catholic Christian faith, we become family. It's extraordinary. It's really very incredible moments. Anyway, I will say to them, ask the most difficult questions you can think of and don't be easily satisfied with the answers. If our Catholic faith is what I believe it to be, and I'm a Catholic priest, I'm a pastor here, I have bought in wholeheartedly, then there can be no bad question. We have to be intellectually honest. We have to ask the most difficult questions we can think of. And I will share our Catholic faith with enthusiasm and conviction. I will not try to persuade you or brainwash you because I believe that if I try to pressure you, the more pressure I exert on you, the more cultish the experience. With God, there has to be freedom in friendship. There can be no pressure. Do you know that the sacraments can actually become invalid with pressure? Not always. But they can be made invalid through pressure. Again, with God, He wants us all to choose him out of our free will because we want to, because we love him and we want to be his friend, not because we have to. And that, that first weekend in, in Advent, usually the beginning of December, I will ask you all to get up in front of the community at, the, at, at Mass on the weekend and tell us that you believe that God is communicating to you in your heart that he wants you to become Christian, Catholic, in your faith. It will be a remarkable witness for all of us to hear and to see that you actually believe that God wants you to become Catholic, to become Christian in your life at this time. Now, if you can't do that, and maybe right now you're wondering, and certainly take your time, because you might not be ready for that yet. But if you are, what a beautiful witness for all of us. And they do. God actually communicates to them in their hearts that he wants them to become Catholic. Remarkable. Remarkable. That first weekend in Lent, usually late February, 
It'll be called the Rite of Sending. We will go down to the cathedral with all the other catechumens and candidates in the archdiocese. Um, in the western suburbs, they will go to the basilica. And there'll be 500 people at each, each place. 500. We don't hear about that in the media. That God is alive and well in our Catholic faith, calling these people into deeper relationship, deeper communion with him. That we are all called to become friends with God. And that there can be no pressure. We have to freely choose it through our free will. As cradle Catholics sitting in the pews, we have heard many homilies, many teachings. Do we understand that God calls us out often from our comfortableness? All of us human beings love comfort and seek it out a lot of the time. And what he asks from us is to allow ourselves to be stretched, to serve one another, to generously give unselfishly to one another through prayer, through charities, through almsgiving. There are countless ways that we can give to our neighbor. There are countless ways we can love our neighbor. By loving God first, everything else will slowly fall into place as it's supposed to. If we truly authentically are working hard at practicing our faith and making God first, Jesus gives us one of those elements of our faith. A very specific part of forgiveness. When we learn to become experts in forgiveness, we become like our Heavenly Father. And we learn how to love. Even though, especially when we feel hurt from others. When we le learn to forgive, allowing those negative experiences to roll off our back quickly and easily, our experience of life becomes joyful. And that's what God offers us in our practice of our faith is joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. It is an in anticipation of the experience of heaven itself. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the needs of the whole world, let us pray now to our God, who comes with salvation to make us strong and to cast out all fear. For the church, for forgiveness and mercy within her ranks, that anger may be put aside and love for one another may prevail. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may temper justice and mercy as they enact and enforce the laws of their land. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking forgiveness for the, from those who they have wronged and for those who believe that they cannot be forgiven, that they may know God's unconditional and eternal promise of mercy and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, debtors to our Lord and Master, and owing him everything that we may that we may see the little debts that are owed us in their true proportion and forgive as we have been forgiven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Temple Schroeder, Lori Freeberg, daughter of Temple, Marjorie Cheetah, and all those on our prayer list, that God may redeem their life from destruction and crown them with com- kindness and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jan Kern and for all our beloved dead, that they may put God, that God may put their transgressions far from them, as far as the east is from the west, and welcome them, purified and holy, into his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God. Accept the prayers of your people. In your mercy, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns with you, one God, forever and ever. Offering these prayers spoken, those deep within our hearts unspoken, through our blessed Mother's immaculate heart, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. Let me bring your love. Make me a channel of your peace where there's despair. Let me bring hope Where there is darkness Only light And where there's sadness Ever joy O Master, grant that I may never seek So much to be consoled 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her beloved spouse, Saint Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> 
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Great job in a difficult situation. Great job. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul. I invite those that are joining us online to pray together the act of spiritual communion, which can be found in the digital worship aid. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love Thee as I ought, and how reveal this wondrous gift, so far surpassing
Today's second collection will be deposited into our general second collection fund. In part, this outreach fund supports grants to service agencies and St. John's assistance programs. One of the agencies we support with our second collection outreach fund is Joseph's Coat. Joseph's Coat is a nonprofit free store serving poor and low income adults, children, and families. They provide clothing, personal and household items, books, and toys at no cost. Thank you for your continued support of our second collection outreach. At this time, I would like to welcome up St. John's School students, Ella and Cora Haroldson, who have an exciting message about the annual marathon fundraiser, which kicks off our fall festival again this year. Cora and Ella, please come forward. Good evening. My name is Cora and this is my sister Ella. We are students at St. John's School. On Saturday, September 26th, John, we will kick off the fall festival with our annual school marathon. Festivities begins with the walk itself at noon in the school parking lot. This is the primary fundraiser for our school. The money our families raise helps to pay for the classroom supplies, school programs, special events, STEM curriculum, and graduation. Thank you to those that have already given so generously. A St. John student will be at the door as you exit to collect donations. Any amount is appreciated. Thank you for supporting our school and we look forward to seeing you at the marathon. I would like to make this announcement too that the school is doing very, very well. My understanding is the enrollment is close to, it's approaching 200. I think I heard 189 was the last number. So uh, Dan Hurley, our uh, principal, has been doing a wonderful job bringing in new students. I think that the coronavirus has something to do with it, of course, but at the same time, wow, so our school is doing much, much better. Please continue to pray for it all of our students and teachers, all of our office staff, and um, so we can have a safe, healthy, and a wonderful year. Calling all men, young and old. This month's Catholic Watchmen meeting takes place at 6.30 p.m. this Tuesday, September 15th, and features Deacon Eric Cooley with a presentation titled, Deacon, Icon of Jesus the Servant. Uh, this month's meeting also features Rocco's Pizza. And I would like to ask you to mark your calendars and get ready to listen and learn about a deacon's role in today's world. We'll be meeting in person and on Zoom, either outside by the St. John's Gathering Space or in the Gathering Space, depending on weather or COVID requirements. As always, all men are welcome and encouraged to join us for great food, fellowship, and teaching See the John's, St. John's website under the Watchman page for the Zooming information. Don't forget that this Wednesday, September 16th, Daily Mass will begin at 9, 10 a.m. as our school children are back in session. To minimize traffic in the church, students will be live streaming these Masses. Links can be found on the St. John's School Facebook page. This coming Thursday, September 17th, there will be no Eucharistic adoration as we have a funeral being held that day. Typically, each September, we hold an annual anointing mass 
However, this year, due to the restrictions of COVID-19, we will not be able to do so. Anointing of the sick is still available on an individual basis. Please contact the parish office for more information or to schedule an appointment. Also due to COVID, St. Anne's will not be meeting in person this month. A parish rosary will be, set, will be held the third Sunday of each month at 7.55 a.m. Members should check their email for more updates. Two weeks from now marks the kickoff of our Discipleship Sunday with an engaging talk from Archbishop Hebda. Mark your calendars for 9.30 a.m. Sunday, September 27th on our school ball field. It's in between the 8.30 and the 10.30 Mass, so please come at not, um, If you can, come to the 8.30 Mass. It would be nice to have you um, before Mass to um, prepare for this beautiful talk from Archbishop Ebda. 10.30, we will have him celebrate Mass, and of course, confirmations, our confirmation students will be confirmed from Archbishop Ebda on that day, September 27th. Fall Festival is just around the corner. But it's not too late to get your raffle tickets. Contact Gail Johnson or Laura Haroldson in the church office to learn how. You need not be present to win. Have you seen our school students sporting St. John's spirit wear and wondered, how can I get one of these really cool shirts or caps? Or maybe you wish you could purchase a similar sweatshirt with our church's logo on it. Well, you're in luck. Throughout the month of September, we are hosting a parish wear and spirit wear sale. Follow the links from our church and school websites or seek out our table at the Fall Festival September 26th. More information is in this week's bulletin. Bulletins are available at each of the exits. The bulletin can also be found on our website along with other news and announcements. Thank you for choosing to celebrate with us today. Please come back and worship with us again. That was a lot. Please stand and let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. <clears throat> Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, <clears throat> thrust into hell, hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, spirits who cry out of the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.
gentle breeze then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great